on the line here on Tennis Channel. We've got a couple of different topics, and we, we stay with the Italian talk here on the line. The rise of Italian tennis is fill in the blank, Tracy. A template for other nations. And I say that because they have now 10 in the top 100. And I, Paul, I think it's a lot to do with, there's so many futures. There's so many challengers. Almost every single week, a young guy, 16, 17, 22, wherever it is, when they're at that stage of the second tier, the third tier, they have a tournament to go play, probably can take their coach with them because it's in the next city. And it makes it a lot easier to kind of sink your teeth into it and improve through competition. U USTA has got to take a page out of that book. There have been very few tournaments for the challengers and for the futures. I know the pandemic is on, but uh, they need more of them. Yeah, well, I'm going to tag that as well because I think it's the same thing. It's a template for growth, and, and you're 100% right. There's a balance between making the young players go out and get used to the world of tennis, but giving them the opportunity also to be at home and try to create a pathway where they can get to the top. And I think that that balance has dissipated a bit here in the States, and part of it's geographic, because the country is so large, it's hard to do that. Italy's smaller geographically, but they've done an amazing job, and all their best players are pushing each other up. We've got to do the same thing here. I say the rise of Italian tennis is great for sponsorships. you got Matteo Berrettini, who's got Cola Vita olive oil. You've got Yannick Sinner, who's got Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> and you've got Lorenzo Musetti, who has an Italian meat company. Talk yeah. about a dinner yeah. party. Yeah. Get that, those three together. That goes to all the, your cooking to stuff. The yeah. foodie. Love, exactly. <laughs> to the foodie. And, and also, the, both the championships, aren't they in Italy now? I mean, Yes, ATP. in Turin, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's a great, I think it's great for tennis. It really is great. And all those young guys are just great players and really flamboyant, charismatic, uh, and young, just to hear their youth. You know, yeah. you can see the smile on Berrettini's face today. I mean, it's really fun to see it. Sinner and Musetti, 19. Yeah. Boy, they are going to catch on fire. Nice. Impressive. Speaking of teenagers, our next topic on the line, Tracy, is Coco Golf will blank at Wimbledon. She will go deep at Wimbledon. She will be a sensation again. And of course, we remember her as a qualifier a couple of years ago, beat Venus Williams in the opening round. Unbelievable match, but she didn't just do that. She went all the way to the fourth round and there was Coco Mania. I don't know if you remember that, Paul. Sure. I mean, she was on the cover of every tabloid. She has a big personality and the British fans just fell in love with her. Two years on, her forehand has improved, her second serve has improved, she's so much stronger. Wealth of experience. She's now won titles, and she's going back there as a seated player. She's going to go deep. Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out, should I be the coach or should I be the TV guy? Because the coach would say, Coco Goff will play at Wimbledon to alleviate the pressure. <laughs> the TV guy would say, Coco Goff will be a contender at Wimbledon, mm. because I think she will be, and I think one of the biggest reasons she'll be a contender is that second serve, which we've talked about a lot. Because she hits a really good slice second serve, I would be imploring her to take a little bit off of her first serve to not put pressure on that second serve, but use that slider a lot. And then you mentioned how much better she's hitting the ball and moving and the, you know, the wealth of experience she has. So there's no reason. Look, we saw all of the new winners on the women's tour. Why can't she be there at the end, there, thereabouts. She absolutely can be already. Absolutely, because remember at the French, she lost in the quarters to Krychikova and had set points in that opening set. I think it was five set points. And she said she's learned so much about from that match how to play big moments. And that slice second serve, actually, you hit the nail on the head because Venus Williams has that same slice yeah, second serve. Mm -hmm. And Venus has won Wimbledon five times because... Wimbledon grass really accentuates the slice and helps you. So uh, very good point there. Thank you. The loss, she said, at Roland Garros is going to make her a champion in the future. It could happen in a couple weeks at the All England Club. Our final on-the-line topic here on TC Live is on the world number one. Blank, Paul, will be the toughest obstacle for Novak Djokovic on the road to a Golden Slam. Novak Djokovic will be the toughest obstacle for Novak Djokovic's road to a Golden Slam. And what I mean by that is the immense amount of pressure, the more he wins, the more he will know that he wins, and the more self-imposed pressure he'll put on, and also the more external pressure he'll be dealing with knuckleheads like us all the time, saying, <laughs> can you do this? Are you going to do it? No one's done it. What if, what if, what if? So 
Novak, is, his mind is unbelievably tough. Now it's going to be tested even more. He's playing the best tennis on the men's tour, and there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to do it, but he's got to stay healthy, and most importantly, the mental component of his game has to be locked up. Tennis-wise, it's your... Oh, so the word is mental exhaustion. That's what I'm mm, going to go okay. with. So tennis-wise, this looks very doable. I mean, there might be a dangerous floater like a Query or an Isner or an Opelka at, on the grass at Wimbledon, but I think the protocols are going to start to wear down some of the players. The protocols at Wimbledon are going to be so strict. It's no more staying in the leafy, green, beautiful town of Wimbledon. It's traveling a half an hour away. Everybody has to stay in the same hotel. No going out to dinner. No having your own barbecue at home with your family. Kind of that relaxed right. day off. And then, if he does Great win point. Wimbledon, two weeks later he goes to the Olympics, where I would think the protocols are going to be even more strict. <laughs> and he's never won a gold medal. He has won Wimbledon five times. But then at the U.S. Open, if he gets there, I think it's going to be easier for him actually on mm. the hard courts. Paul, which do you think of those, Wimbledon, Olympics, U.S. Open, would be the toughest for him? The U.S. Open. Because, because that's, it's the last one. Yep. Because if he can get through the next two, the pressure is going to be off the charts. And it's going to be the easiest in terms of dealing with stuff Tracy's talking about because it's going to be the least restrictions in New York, full crowds. It's going to be much better there unless something changes. But the immense pressure that is going to be in the stratosphere of Novak Djokovic around then, it'd be fun to see. Remember when Rod Laver did it, even when Steffi Groff did it, and she won the Golden Slam. I mean, there wasn't as much social media. Remember no, when Serena Williams a couple of years yep. back I mean, it looked like her, her road was it's pretty tough. clear with Roberta Vinci and uh, Flavia Panetta in mm -hmm. the finals, and she got tight. Because it, it's really that one time. It's I mean, tough. it's hard to get those first three under your belt, and then now you have this one opportunity to win seven matches. That's why I never wanted to win any of them. I didn't <laughs> want to get to that point where there was that much pressure. and just. You, you remember, I think we may have even called the match when Novak lost to Juan Martin Del Potro yeah. at the Olympics in Rio. I mean, and he was devastated. I think that could be... Arguably the toughest hurdle. Okay. That's Maybe a good point. because he's never won. He's never yep. won the gold. Yeah, where he's won the U.S. Open. He's he's won That's Wimbledon multiple only, times. The only hole in his resume. Yep.